Over the last couple years, MX Linux has become very popular, and for good reason. It's really good, and every time I make an MX Linux video, I'm always surprised at how good I find it. Now, right now, I'm in the middle of a long-term MX Linux review, and that video should be up towards the end of January. But what I thought I'd do today is talk about five things you absolutely must do after you've installed MX Linux for the first time. Now, one thing we should say when you go about doing this is that for the most part, the process is going to be exactly the same no matter what version of MX Linux you've installed. So if you've installed the MX Linux KDE version or the MX Linux XFCE version, it really doesn't matter. The only thing that's going to change is the tweak tool is going to be a little bit more robust on the XFCE version. And the look and feel will be a little bit different, obviously, because they're different desktop environments. So I'm going to be using the KDE version, but for the most part, the things that I show you will be the exact same no matter what version you're using. So let's go ahead and jump in with the first thing you should do after installing MX Linux. So the first thing you should do is open up a terminal and update your system. Now, the one thing you'll notice is that my terminal looks a little bit different than yours likely will. And that's just simply because I've gone through and customized my terminal to look a bit different. Yours will probably look like this. And that's fine, they're both gonna function exactly the same, but we'll go with the way the default is. So in order to update your system, you wanna do sudo apt update. What that's going to do is update all the mirrors that are attached to your system. And that will allow you to get the most recent list of software that is available to your system and also will allow MX Linux to find, figure out which packages on your system are in need of an update. In my case, I have none, but we'll do sudo apt upgrade, which is the next thing you'll want to do. So hit enter after that and it will go through and update every package on your system. Now, two things to note here. First, you'll probably have to enter your root password somewhere along the line. So make sure you keep that in mind. It's not unusual. In fact, it would be unusual if it didn't ask. For me, I've already input my password within this terminal session, so it didn't ask me. The next thing you should keep in mind is that because MX Linux is built on Debian Stable, the first time you update, you're going to get the most updates you'll probably ever see. It probably won't be a ton of updates, but there's going to be quite a few. After that point, you'll see fewer and fewer updates simply because Debian Stable doesn't get very many upgrades. So you'll know once you've gone through and done that initial update of your system that you probably won't see that many ever again. Now, once you've done this, reboot your computer because there are certain packages that won't take effect or won't be updated until the kernel is out of memory. So always just go through and reboot your computer after you update. You don't technically have to, but it's best to do it now than do it later. Once you've updated your system and have restarted your computer, the next thing you'll want to do is tweak your setup just a little bit. Now, I'm not going to talk about going through and racing your system or customizing it full-fledged. You can do that pretty much on your own at any time. Mostly what I'm talking about this time is seeking out the MX Linux tweak tool and changing the position of your panel. So if you're going to go through and use your system for any amount of time, you'll want to go through and make sure that it's to your liking. And you can change your themes and stuff like that in the traditional ways of doing so. Now, w depending on which desktop environment you're using, that process will be a little bit different. That's why I'm not going to talk about actually changing themes here, because that process is different between the two desktop environments. But for the panel position, you can actually go through and change that in MX Tweak Tool. And it's really easy. You just go through and change it like this, hit Apply, and it will go through and move it to the top. It might take a little while on KDE. It's a little bit faster in XFCE. Now, in XFCE, you'll have several other options in MX Tweak Tool than you'll get in KDE. And that's just simply because it's a little easier to pull that stuff out of XFCE and put it in a custom tool than it is in KDE, which is much more constraining when it where the settings are, if that makes any sense at all. So in KDE, you don't have nearly as many options in Tweak Tool. In XFCE, you can go through and do several things 
including, I believe, changed your themes and your dark and light modes and all that stuff right from the tweak tool if that's what you want to do. So mess around with the tweak tool after you've done your updates and you'll be able to have your system look the way you want it to look right off the bat. So once you've done that, the next thing is to start installing your software. Now I'm not going to go through the process of that too much, but there are a couple things you should know about installing software on MX Linux. Now obviously you can do the traditional thing and do sudo apt install audacity or whatever. You can do that from the terminal if that's what you want to do. It's just Debian, so you can pretty much do anything you would do in a Debian-based distro from the terminal. Just use apt if that's what you want to do and, and, and if that's what you're familiar with. For everyone else, you can go to, through and use the GUI package manager that MX Linux comes with. So you'll go to your menu, go to MX Tools, go to MX Package Installer. It'll ask for your root password. And then you'll see a list and location of things that you can install. So the popular applications, stuff from the stable repo, some stuff from the MX test repo, the Debian backports, and flat packs. So these last three is going to pop up a warning saying, hey, this is stuff that's not supported by MX. Actually, I think it's just the last two. Uh, are you sure you want to view these things? Obviously, that's paraphrasing, but you can just go ahead and hit yes, and you can choose or whether or not to show that message again. Basically, right here is your your app store. It's not as pretty as other app stores, but I find it more functional simply because it gives you the ability to find stuff from different repos fairly easily. So you can just go through and you can do searches if you want. So let's just say we wanted to find Caden Live. We can go through and just do that, hit this here, and then update. Now, similar to what you'd find on like Manjaro with Pamac, you can actually go through and select multiple things. So now we've selected Caden Live. We can go through and find, let's just say, OBS uh, Studio right here. And then hit that. And then, then you'd go through and hit the install button and it would install it. Now, I'm not going to do this because I already have both of those things installed. That's the one downside of using this GUI package manager. If you've gone through previously, like say you're installing packages later on into your MX Linux uh, usage and you've installed packages both from the package installer and the terminal, you'll find that the package installer doesn't actually know what you have installed unless you've installed it from the package installer previously. So if you installed Kden Live from the flat from FlatHub like I have, which is from a terminal command, it doesn't actually know that that's installed. So that's one downside of it. But if you install all of your applications from the package installer, it'll go through and remember what you have installed and you can just go through and you'll know that it's there. It also allows you to filter things from installed, upgradable, and, and not installed. And it allows you to install things from like Flatpak and FlatHub. So if you can't find something from the Debian repos, you can go through and choose to install things from FlatHub or you can download a Flatpak package directly from like a website or something and then search for that from the home directory if that's what you want to do if you don't want to use FlatHub. Now, let's just say you still can't find the software that you want to install. There's a possibility you might be able to fix that by going to the repo manager. So you want to type in repo here and it's just going to be MX repo manager. It'll ask you again for your your root password. What this tool does is it allows you to choose to do two things. It will allow you to change the mirrors that you're using. So for example, if your download speeds during your update process were really slow, you can go through and change to a different mirror. So for example, there are several mirrors here in the United States that I could choose from and you want to choose the one that's closest to you. So, so for me, I'm pretty sure Madison is probably actually going to be a little bit closer, but you can also just select this button here and it will go through and test each mirror based on the speed and then it will select the one that was the fastest. I don't think that this is actually going to end up changing anything. Oh, it did. It changed to uh, Illinois. Okay, that's fine. And then it will actually won't take effect until the next time you run sudo apt update. So that's one thing that the repo manager does. The other thing it allows you to do is select other repos. So you can check things like the bullseye non-free repo will allow you to install more proprietary software. 
Same thing with the back ports, which will allow you to install newer non-free software. So you can just go through and check those things, hit apply, and then it will go through and update those mirrors the next time you do sudo apt update. It will also go through and list all of the repos that you've added over time. So if you've used MX Linux for a while, chances are you've probably added other repositories when you found a piece of software that wasn't in the standard Debian repositories. And that will be listed here and allow you to unselect it if you no longer want to update from that repository. So we're just going to hit get in close. And then once you, you've gone through and done that, just run sudo apt update again. And it will go through all those repos that you selected earlier and will update those mirrors so that you have the most recent version of the, the software list. It will take longer, as you can see. It will take longer than it did before simply because you're now pulling from many more mirrors. You also may get some errors, so just keep that in mind. So once you've gone through and done that, the next thing you'll want to do is install Codex. So there is a tool for this in MX Linux called the Codex tool. So you go to MX Tools and then you find MX Codex Installer. It will again ask you for your password. It will then ask you if you are going to be okay assuming legal responsibility for downloading the Codex. Now, the reason why is because a lot of these Codex are proprietary and they all have EULAs or end user license agreements. And this is basically just asking you if you agree with those license agreements. Go hit OK. It's going to go through and download all the, re the Codex that you want. So this will allow you to play things like DRM content, like MP3 content, and stuff like that. Things that require proprietary codecs in order to work. Now, if you're just going to use like something like VLC, that's probably going to download those along as a dependency and it'll just work. But if you're going to use some other media player or you're going to use a browser that needs certain DRM functionality, downloading the codecs will enable all of your media, media to play no matter whether it needs that stuff or not. Once it's done, it'll hit OK, and then it will go away. That's literally all there is to it, and you'll only ever have to install that once. You'll never have to do that again. OK, so the last one on the list is probably the most important. Now, that's debatable, I suppose, because technically updating your system is very important. But for me, no matter what you do, you should always back up your system no matter what, and you should set that process up so that it's automatic. So when you want to do a backup, there are a couple ways you can do it. You can download an app called TimeShift. And I'm not going to talk about how to use TimeShift simply because it's not installed by default. By default, MX Linux comes with a tool called Back in Time. And basically what Back in Time does is it allows you to back up your system. And you can do so by just searching Back in Time in your menu or you can do this either with the root or without root and i'm going to go ahead and use root so that's going to allow me to back up things that are password protected and it would allow me to save my backup into a place that is also password protected or requires user root user privileges i'm not actually going to do that in this case so it doesn't really matter which one i use but i'm just used to using this one so once you go ahead and enter your password and the first time you run this it's going to come up here back in time is not configured would you like to restore previous configuration if you never run this before hit no if you have and you have a, a configuration saved you can hit yes so i'm just gonna hit no and this is what you're going to come up with now what this does is just backs up your system so the first thing you'll want to do is choose a place where it will allow you to save the the snapshot that is going to create you'll want to do this on a drive that is not your main drive. That way, if your main drive fails, you can go through and still have all of your data. So in my case, I'm going to save it to my external hard drive. So in, in which case, I'm going to go here and media and Dr. MDub and Artemis. We'll in backups and we'll create a new folder here called MX Linux. And hit choose. And then what we're going to do is create a schedule. So what basically what this will do is allow you to change how often this is run. So in this case, I'm going to choose every day at midnight is fine. And then we'll want to go to the include tab and hit add folder. I want to do the entire home directory. So slash and then home and then choose. Okay. And then what I'm going to want to do 
is check and see if their auto remove functionality is set the way I want it to do. So what this will do is it will delete things that are older. Uh, it will delete snapshots that are older ten, than 10 years. It will also remove things if the space is less than one gigabyte or if the free inodes are less than 2%. Uh, it will also allow you to go through and hit smart remove and you can keep all snapshots for the last two days, keep one snapshot per day for the last seven days, and so on and so forth. This way you can kind of make sure that your hard drive doesn't get filled up really fast. You can also go through and, oh, sorry about the dog, I can't, I can't control when they start decide to play. You can also go through and select several options like not allowing snapshots to happen on battery because this is going to take up some amount of resources while it's running. You can also have it so it's only doing one snapshot at a time because you want you can go through and shut up snapshots for different folders. So I'm going to be doing the whole home directory. Your snapshots will be quicker if you just do smaller directories. So once you're done with this, just go ahead, OK. And then you want to hit this button that here that says take snapshot. It'll actually go through and do the snapshot. It'll take a while depending on how big the directory is. In this case, I'm doing the whole home directory, so it's going to take a while. So once you've done that, you've backed up your computer. It will also go through and set up a cron job. I don't think it's actually what it's doing as a cron job, but it will set up a schedule so that it will go through and do this every single night at midnight like I selected there in the first step. So once that's done, you'll you've backed up your system and you have a working backup just in case something goes wrong. As a bonus, you can check out my video on the MX Linux snapshot tool. Basically what that will allow you to do is create an ISO of your system. So it'll, all the software that you've installed, all the themes that you've set, everything, it'll put it on an ISO and that way you can put all that stuff onto a USB key and reinstall your system exactly as it was when you created the ISO and it, that way you'll never lose anything. It's kind of like an extra way of backing up. So that is it for this video. Those are the five things that I've chosen to do every time I've installed MX Linux, which I've now done like four or five times because I've put it on all of my computers. Uh, I'm This is probably going to be my most in-depth long-term review simply because I've found that I really, really like MX Linux. There are some things that I don't like about it. There are a lot of things that I really enjoy about it. So I'm really looking forward to making that video because I have tons of thoughts in my head about the experience that I've had so far. I've been using it now for a couple weeks, but uh, I, I want to use it a couple weeks more before I record that video. I'm very anxious about it. But anyways, that is it for this video. If you have thoughts, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast, and if you'd like to support me on Patreon like these fine people, you can do so at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.